So if we want to understand intercultural communication and how it works, it's really un important to understand the larger kind of global macro level context in which intercultural communication occurs. That means it's really important to understand um, what brings people from different cultural perspectives together and under what conditions does that happen and are those equal conditions. All of those things are really important to understand if we want to understand how people communicate across social location. So for this lecture, we're going to focus on globalization. This is a term that you've probably all heard before um, in several different contexts, and it's one of those it's one of those terms and one of those concepts that we think we know what it means, but we've never really heard like an actual definition for. So what this lecture is going to be is it's going to be a primer on globalization, like the components that comprise globalization, and going to kind of use this to jumpstart a larger conversation about how this affects intercultural communication. So globalization in a nutshell is this idea of a complex web of forces that bring people and culture and markets and beliefs and practices into closer proximity and interrelatedness with one another. So basically it brings people and business and commerce just kind of all kind of closer figuratively together. Um, it's important to understand though, we've talked about neoliberalism that these web of forces, these relationships occur within the context of neoliberalism. So what that means is that these global relationships occur within this kind of larger process of uh, wealth accumulation for economic elites. And so that means different people experience globalization very differently. And we'll kind of explore that over the next couple of weeks. But for globalization itself, just what globalization is and what that means, there's some kind of key components of globalization. And those include accelerated flow of capital, global cities, flow of people, an altered social geography, and an increased uneven interconnectedness. So I'm going to go through each of these components individually to give you a little bit more context on what they mean. So accelerated flow of capital is this idea that with technological advancement, um, the, the ways in which uh, uh, commodities can kind of move from one country to another um, has become more efficient, has become faster. Right. Um, so, for example, um, advancements in communication and information technology, right, like make it easier to communicate with someone in a different country, right? Like you can have a real time conversation with a business associate in Japan, right, over Skype or something like that, right? It's become easier to trade and to do business with the advancement of technology. The second component of globalization is this idea of global cities, and this is very related to the first one of accelerated flow of capital. So as global as globalization as it is now really kind of um, came into being, right, uh, there was this idea you heard, you would hear a lot of scholars say things that uh, say things like space and time no longer matter. So for example, like if you could go on Skype or Viber or some sort of app right now and have a real time conversation with your friend or family member or business partner in another country, right? Like just right then and there, what does time and space really mean? Globalization has made it so that time and space no longer matter. The distance between two countries no longer matters. But what the reality is though, is that space and time and location and distance is still very, very important because how globalization functions, how capital flows, how people flow is through these concentrated nodes, these places uh, that kind of serve as um, processing zones of global capital. And these places are called global cities. So global cities tend to have large um, financial networks. They have um, high, you know, really high prestigious universities. And there are these places where global 
um, global capital is kind of processed, right? In the US, we have a global city that is New York City. So we have Wall Street, for example. We have high class universities like New York University there. Um, we have a large concentration of commerce that happens in New York City. Um, some other examples of global cities are Japan and London, Tokyo, Japan, and London. The third component of globalization is the flow of people. And so what that means is that globalization within a neoliberal context has created um, a lot of economic and social changes. And as a result, that makes it so that many people end up leaving their home countries and moving to a different country. Um, or they might end up moving from like one region of their country to another region of their country that's maybe experiencing some more economic growth. Um, this can kind of happen in a lot of ways if it might be something like a, a student visa or something like that. So people start traveling to go to school. Or it could mean something like um, economic downturn that's so severe that people can no longer afford to live in their home countries and so they leave to a more prosperous country in search of employment. That's something that we're going to um, explore further when we talk about global migration is how economic downturn kind of in this larger global neoliberal process can facilitate the flow of people. This part is really important because in one sense, it's made us more interconnected with each other and it's why we even have the opportunity to communicate across social location and, and why intercultural communication is so important. But those flows happen in very unequal contexts and that's something that we're gonna explore further when we go into global migration. Uh, the fourth component is an altered social geography. So as business and commerce can kind of flow more freely, as you have an increased flow of people, what you have is different um, cultures and people and frames kind of coming together in one space. And so what that happens is the social geography of the place changes. Um, you hear this a lot when a McDonald's comes to town. Uh, McDonald's can, um, opening up in another country, can create lots of controversy, right? Some people are excited because it's this idea that um, this big Western corporation is showing an interest in your land, and so it's a sign that economic prosperity is coming. But then for others, there is this actual kind of fear that McDonald's or other businesses like it coming in are going to kind of change the cultural landscape of the place, especially among young people, that they might like, for example, want McDonald's over their own cultural food, right? Because so, there's this idea that as people and businesses and everything kind of um, start moving from place to place more easily, it is going to change the social um, landscape of the place to some degree and how people interact with each other. And finally, you have this idea of increased uneven interconnectedness. And basically what that means is that all of these things come together and make us more interconnected with each other. When you have um, capital that's able to flow more freely, when you have people that are moving from one country to another and higher numbers, which is kind of what we're experiencing right now, when all of these things are happening and all of these kind of different cultural perspectives and um, differences and um, businesses are all kind of coming together, that it makes us all more interconnected. And while that's true, we are more interconnected, that connectedness is happening in a very uneven way, which basically means we're not all benefiting from that equally, right? So if a business moves its manufacturing overseas because there's in you know cheaper labor laws and cheaper land and less environmental regulations right it's basically moving to a place where they can treat their workers not as well as maybe um, they would be treated in the u.s for example right um 
And so when things like that happens, it raises this very important question about who's benefiting from these changes and who's not benefiting from these changes. And is there a way to envision globalization in a way that's more equal, um, that benefits more people, and what might that look like? And again, I want to reiterate that globalization, all of these processes, why it's uneven, why that interconnectedness is uneven, is because globalization happens within the context of neoliberalism. And in your, neo in your neoliberalism lecture, we talked about how it's the set of ideas and kind of policies and economic policies and ideologies that basically facilitate wealth accumulation among the economic elite. So basically changes that are meant to maximize profits for big corporations. And that happens on a global scale, right? So uh, government deregulation, for example, that allows large companies to move their manufacturing overseas and like privatize public resources and things that um, allow for wealth accumulation. Globalization and this increased interconnectedness is happening with those interests in mind, that wealth accumulation for the economic elite. And so what happens is um, you have these changes that have been very profitable for some, but for others are really struggling. And often, um, as you'll see when you watch um, the film Close to Die For, uh, really kind of can come at the expense of people's lives. And so for that reason, it's really kind of important. This is something that we're going to explore further, how globalization and neoliberalism come together in the lives of the people who um, kind of lose the most in the process. Uh, so these are my sources. And um, like neoliberalism, globalization can be kind of a lot to wrap your head around. This was really just kind of a nuts and bolts lecture. Um, we'll explore it more through film, um, through your discussion activities, and um, hopefully by the end of this week you'll have a kind of better understanding of how these things kind of come together. And of course let me know if you have any questions about the content for today. Thank you.